Listen, if it wouldn't... If it, take two. I've got combsitis. Hang on. <laughs> Listen, if it wouldn't be... I saw it on a commercial. It must be what actors... Yeah, are. actors are always getting into character in weird ways. Yeah. They should, they should do radio for a few years because then you just do it. Yeah, it doesn't... Can you do this? Yes, when? Anytime. Right now. So... If it's not too much trouble, we would really appreciate it if you, all your friends, neighbors, family, um, pets, would like, subscribe, and or follow This Is True Really News on Castaway 2, because Castaway 1 we haven't found yet. Uh, they're still out there. Poor it was lost. CastBox, Acast, and Podcast Addict before the intervention. Thank you. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true, as far as you know. Help Desk Follies. So, this guy's complaining about his computer's been hacked. Mm. You know, anytime anything strange ever goes wrong, it's been hacked, right? Of course. Because... Tell my wife. (laughs) Whenever he booted the computer, opened a program, closed a program, whatever he did, the entire theme song, the entire theme song to Reading Rainbow would play. That would drive a man nuts. Turns out the computer had not been hacked. No. He left it unattended. Somebody came by and set every single Windows sound to play the entirety (laughs) of Reading Rainbow. There you are. I like that. I want to work at that company. With friends like that. Staff at a logistics company in Germany. All right, we're talking logistics company. Their job right is to move things. And they're Germans. So it should be very efficient. The staff apparently threw out um, about $1.2 million worth of cocaine. I mean, we're talking threw it out in the trash, not realizing that the packages they'd found inside banana crates were drugs, according to customs officials. Authorities said that a fruit logistics company in Erding, near Munich, called police to report that workers had discovered four and a half kilos of cocaine in organic waste bins on their premises. Yes, you could retire on that. Police determined that the drugs had been dumped there a day earlier by subcontractors who had no idea of what the foreign objects were they found wrapped in the tape. They just saw stuff in a banana crate that didn't belong there and threw it out. The Munich Customs Office said the crates had been shipped from Ecuador via the Netherlands. Couldn't find any more of the stuff around. But Hey, you picked up four and a half kilos. Throwing cocaine at your logistics company. Pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> Radar Date- O'Reilly would be crushed. Dateline Ireland. Or high. Hmm. A former security guard and beekeeper, the latter of which earned him awards for his honey, who decided to become a drug dealer instead, is hang on, hang on. Yeah. Award winning beekeeper who turns to drugs. Yes. Apparently it's not as lucrative as it sounds. Was it after a visit to Germany? Yeah, but it might well, he was in Ireland, so it would probably be far. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Shall we say he's a bit miffed about at least one of his life's choices? Which one? You'll figure it out. In 2005, Clifton Collins decided to grow pot full time. He rented a home in Galway and got right to work. Business was good. And by 2010 or 2011, he was cash flush and looking for a place to invest. So uh... he decided on Bitcoin when they were about five bucks a coin. He bought 6,000 of them. Cleverly stashing the codes for his accounts in the aluminum cap of his fishing rod case. When he was arrested, cops found more than $2,100 worth of cannabis in his car, and Mr. Collins was sent to prison for five years. His landlord had the home in Galway cleared out, and the fishing rod case disappeared. Workers at a local dump say they remember seeing thrown out fishing gear, which was likely incinerated. Hey, they could work for that company in Germany. <laughs> exactly. And I'm guessing it was the honey thing he didn't, he regretted not doing. <laughs> Man's been charged for a rather explosive gender reveal party that was heard by nearby residents in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Kingston's Anthony, Sp- yes, Kingston's Anthony Spinelli was charged with disorderly conduct. Police, you said. sure it wasn't Spicoli? Hmm. Hmm. Police in Kingston. Call Mark Harmon. He might know. 
<laughs> wow, that is an arcane Man, cultural we'll reference. Take a reference for 20 art. <laughs> 20 wow there's an old reference too <laughs> anthony Spinelli of king i don't get out of bed for 20 charged with disorderly conduct and police say in the town not far from the massachusetts state line they received reports of a loud explosion the night of april 20th so they responded to to romeo quarry okay so they found people who acknowledged holding a gender reveal party with explosives the explosive was uh tannerite Oh, my Lord. Oh, no. 80 pounds of Tannerite. Oh, my Lord. The family figured the quarry would be a safe spot to blow up the explosive, which is is typically sold over the counter as a target for firearms practice. You know when you watch, like, Arlie Amory shooting things and they explode? Oh, yeah. On, on the military channel? Mm -hmm. That's the stuff. Tannerite's incredibly explosive. 80 pounds. So they Pretty didn't sure. look up how much they should use. They had no idea. They had the money for 80 pounds. They went with it. Apparently. Come on. Let, think about it. If you're in your 20s, 30s, what are you going to do? How do you, you buy 80 pounds thing. of Tannerite? No injuries were reported, police said. And I also still looked everywhere and couldn't find the gender of the kid. <laughs> well, we, we think the poor child is now deaf. <laughs> well, the rest of his family's dumb, so... This is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.